this is about five years ago, a dad asked me, he goes, can you, can you give my son some confidence? And I said, oh, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, just even at home and stuff, he doesn't have confidence. I'm like, well, that's a, that's a loaded question. Yeah, it's a loaded question, but there are things you can do, Yeah, but that's a loaded question. And then there's a point where you have to be the dad and <laughs> yeah, seriously, yeah. <laughs> help out with that a little bit. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but in terms of hockey, I, we can help with that a bit. It'll spill over to life a little bit too. And of course, as we do this, I would like to touch on how the player can uh, work on it himself and then how the coaches and parents can help with this. And uh, just to be clear, some coaches will not help with this because it's not their thought process. But anyways, so what what, what is confidence? So, you know, in the general, uh, it just means that you got the feeling of certainty. That's all. That's what confidence is. And description. so obviously if you if you're not confident, then you're lacking certainty certainty in what you're doing or what you're thinking or whatever, right? So that's that's pretty clear. Um my question would be and I guess it's a question that comes up a lot is like how do you build confidence in your kid or in yourself or whatever? So from I'll I'll take it from a hockey player's perspective is how do you build confidence? Well, for me, and I want you to pipe in any time, for me, it, it goes it goes to the, uh, um, it goes to mental toughness, but this is hard for kids to really grasp, but but this is, and it's not necessarily the nicest thing to hear, but it's, it's about mental toughness. It's, it's understanding that you have a choice sometimes. Okay, you have, you do have a choice sometimes. It's like what you tell yourself, it's, it's what you think about, will produce confidence. But for me, confidence is doing something where you can see some success in something, right? So like if we're talking hockey, how do I build confidence in hockey? A lot of times if we're not confident in other areas of our life, then it's going to be hard because we just don't have that confidence to really do anything, right? You're doubting yourself in a lot of things. So I would say find something that you can kind of measure or you can, you can I don't even know if measure is the word, but something that you can build confidence with. And, uh, like, for example, go and consistently work out, right? Because you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation or maybe even unfamiliar or whatever. And by consistently working out, what you've done is you've given yourself a measuring stick that, oh, when I say something, I can, I, when I say I'm going to do something, I can do it, even though it's just one aspect of your life. But what happens is, like, for example, in working out is if you go to the gym or you run every day, whatever way you want to do it is there's side benefits from just that you told yourself you're going to do something consistently. The side benefits are, Oh, I ran or I lifted, let's say lifting. I, I lifted, I squatted the first time and it hurt. And, uh, I, I put the bar on my back and I got five sets of five reps, but over a period of time, I've been able to add a little bit of weight and I get more reps. Just that's very, very basic. Yep. But what that's done is it's given you confidence. Like, okay, I can actually, I can do this task. And basically by doing anything, by doing it, even if you fail and doing it again, you will get better and it, it will breed confidence. So that the other side benefit of just the weightlifting and stuff is that after doing it for a while, you're going to notice that your body starts to get a little harder, a little, a little, stronger so that's it's building a, another sense of confidence oh i i i'm doing something i'm getting results i'm looking better if i look better i'm probably going to feel better if i feel better i'm probably going to act better and i'm going to treat myself better and i'm going to people are going to look at me differently so it's by doing one thing you build out does that make sense oh yeah I, i'm going to yeah. tighten it up there the so the gym thing is nice because it's i don't know if it's not even just the gym thing. I think any physical skill mm -hmm. is the easiest thing to use as an example because it's, you can see it, yeah. you know? So we always talk about things in terms of the working out because it's something that you'll see, you'll develop and you'll get that you'll get to see measurable progress in a short period of time, especially when you first start because you get the newbie gains, right? Yeah. When you're new to something, your mm -hmm. learning curve is much quicker when yeah. you're, as you get, more and more towards an expert level, it's a lot harder to improve. So because you get the newbie gains, you'll see things quick and then you'll get some confidence that way because you'll be you'll trust in your ability to do things. You'll be able to see that there's actually something that works to make you better. 
and all that kind of stuff. But you can take that out and you can do it with anything like you mentioned. So for me, one thing that I learned, and this is like a psychology thing. If you take people that are scared of something and you're trying to get them to get over it and to not be scared of it anymore, yeah. then you have to expose them to the thing that they're scared of. Yeah. But it's not you force them. It's yeah. they have to voluntarily decide yeah. they're going to do it. Yeah. And that actually works. And that makes people yeah. less scared or more confident in that situation that they're in facing yeah. that thing that they're doing. So one example that I remember hearing one, uh, there's a, a lady, she was scared of elevators. I was just going to say this Is one. Is this the one? Yeah. She said she was scared of elevators. So what they would do in their psychology session is they would say, okay, well, can you stand in an elevator? And she would say, no. Can you look at an elevator? No. Can you go within 10 feet of an elevator? No. So can you look at a picture of an elevator? She said, yes. It's like, okay, we'll look at a picture of an elevator then. So they show her the picture of the elevator and she freaks out a little bit, but then she looks at it yeah. and then she's okay. And then they progress from there to the point where she could go and stand in the elevator yeah. and the doors could close and it was fine. Yeah. And this is how, this is obviously, that's an extreme example, obviously, but this is how you build confidence. You have to voluntarily expose yourself to the thing yeah. that, or the situation or the circumstance where you don't feel confident. So yeah. that could be like public speaking is a good one. Well, it was a podcast for me. Yeah. Podcast. So this, exactly. this, this right Video here, stuff. it was when I was in sales, when I got, when I was in marketing and sales with that big company I was with, it was picking up the phone because and this is what I was talking about. The mental, the mental side of it is, is, is if you think too much about it, it doesn't happen, right? You talk yourself right out of things. Mm -hmm. So as a hockey player, let's say you're a big guy and, and, and you're playing a tough team and you know that they, like back in my days, there was a lot of fighting. If you think about the fight all day, you, you, you're going to freeze, right? You got to learn how to, to, to just get into the fight. Not, I'm not saying that yeah, yeah. go, go fight, but it's, it's not worry about it and just do what's important now, right? Yeah. What's important now all the time. And don't think too much, just live in the moment. So that's why I was talking about being uh, um, how to build the confidence is like mental toughness is kind of part of it. Right. But uh, um, but like, so when I was in sales, it was like picking up that phone, like, okay, I'm this 25 or 23 year old guy phoning a guy that runs a big company. Well, what's he going to think? Like, and if you start thinking about that, then you'll talk yourself right out. And if then, if you don't, so, so the biggest thing was just picking up that phone and guess what's going to happen probably your first time. Like I'll tell you exactly what happens. You pick up the phone and you're trying to make money, right? So you're trying to get money out of this guy's jeans. So when you call him, it's in your voice at first. And you're, you, you, you know, I had a, probably a voice crackling like a 14 year old boy. And uh, yeah, like, and it was terrible and I failed, right? And the failure piece was actually the good part because it's, it, it forces you to do it again if you want to continue on this. So what happens after a while is you make 10 calls and they, and you might quit that day because it's, it's hard and you get rejected. But by the continuation of, of doing the uncomfortable thing, all of a sudden that it's just a phone call now, like really what's going to happen. And then you have maybe some guy goes, yeah, yeah, come on and see me. Yeah. I'll talk to you about that. Sounds good. So now you're, you raise your confidence a bit. And they can knock it right down yep. by saying, yeah, get out of here. This is crap. But you do it over and over and that becomes a comfortable thing. And it just becomes part of what you do every single day. And I was saying this about the podcast too. How I got into the, like how we got into this is I took a course. Every year I like to take a course in something. So the one year I took it in, uh, in it was a business course. So the first task they had us do is doing Facebook, um, do, a, do a, a, a two to four minute for 10 days in a row, two times a day. Of um, what do they call it? Vlogs. Yeah, vlog. Yeah. And I'm like, no, but it was part of the course, and I had to do, had it. To do it. And uh, fortunately, I had a business to talk about, but I didn't want to be on Facebook. So the first time I did it, I'm like, oh, come on, man. And then, and I never enjoyed doing it. But then it was like became pretty pretty simple. I had stuff to talk about. So what it did is it revealed that actually, yo, you actually have a brain, man. You know, like you actually can do something that you never thought you would or didn't think was in your wheelhouse. So then when, when we decided to do podcasting, I already built a, a, a comfortability in front right. of that camera, which I, I still like, it's weird to me yeah. and the microphone, which is weird, but now it's like, yeah, we can do a podcast 24 hours a day. I don't no problem. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's now I'm confident with it and I, I'm confident that I have something to say and yeah. And I have, the, do I have a similar thing. Cause I was always a uh, people that anyone who knows me personally is I never had social media. I had it for a brief period, like in grade 11, 
whatever. And then I was took a hiatus until I started working here full time because it's a good tool. Yeah. And even now, I was just talking to Mike Christine about this the other night. It was like I'm gonna I'm starting to do uh, TikToks on my channel yeah. of me speaking. Yeah. Because that is like an insecurity for me for sure. It's yeah. like hearing my own voice on a yeah. video and posting it out where everyone can see it. It's out there. You're vulnerable like yeah. in that kind of sense. And that's something I was not not comfortable doing. I'm still not comfortable doing it. But I'm trying to do exactly what we're talking about here. I'm trying to force myself yeah. to face that. Yeah. And that's a huge part of building confidence is the ability to face a fear or face an insecurity and confront it voluntarily. Like go after it right away. Because exactly to your point, you're going to mess it up and all that kind of stuff. But it's really important to know that nothing happens, yep. right? Your mental feeling, that's nothing act physical. That's just your own mentality yep. getting in your way. Yep. But if you just weigh it for what it is, in actuality, just objectively looking at it, like nothing happens. Like you're fine. You wake up tomorrow and you get to go do something else. Yeah. You know? And not, so, not many people actually care. Well, th this, <laughs> I wrote, that's exactly oh, what I wrote you? down. I wrote down right here. No one thinks about it as much as you. You know, and I think those are those two points are so important for people to understand is yeah. no one cares about it as much as you do. Yeah. Like no one is thinking about this or analyzing it the way that you are, number yeah. one. Yeah. And understanding that you're going to be okay regardless of what the outcome is, putting those in your head yeah. and understanding that that is the reality will help you to face that fear. Because even if I, I love the example, because most kids can't stand talking in front of people. Right. And we talked about it when we do some of the interview prep with these yeah. kids that they have a mouse voice and they're scared to be loud and yeah. to speak. And we're sitting there just like, be louder. Like, we yeah. don't care. Like, yeah. just be louder. Yeah. <laughs> you know, talk as if we were talking not in this setting. Right. 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 And <clears throat> the kids don't understand that. And public speaking is another good example of that. When you have to give a speech in grade school yeah. or whatever, very difficult thing to do for whatever reason, because you're at the front, all the attention's on you. You feel like you're exposed and vulnerable and that's understandable. It's one of the biggest fears. What do people think? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? What are, what are and, people going to think about me? And understanding that nothing is going to happen. Even if you butcher it, even if you forget your lines, even if you say the wrong thing, even if you turn really beat red, like no one actually cares. No. And they're glad it's not them. Yeah. they're Yeah, <laughs> seriously. You know, yeah. and they all, most people feel the same way that you feel, Yeah, you know? So and that's part of building building your confidence is you have to put yourself in the situation where you know you're not strong voluntarily. Do that. Understand that you're going to be okay and understand that no one actually cares that much. Even if you get the one dick that is going to chirp you for it or whatever after, yeah. it doesn't matter. They have their own problems and yeah. insecurities and whatever. Yeah. The vast majority of people don't think about it as much as you do. Yeah. And so that's you can do that with any any life and any life task that you're doing, you can do it as a hockey player. You can do it with certain yeah. skills, whatever insecurity you have as yeah. a, as a hockey player, like one for a lot of people might be being physical, like yep. getting into the jam of yep. it. Just go do it. Like you'll be okay. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so there's so many ways that you can go with it, but that's like the framework of the yeah. mental framing that you need to try to build some confidence for yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah.